Welcome back. One of the top stories of the year is the trial of two former ministers, Femi Fani Kayode and Nenadi Usman, over allegations of fraud. Trial has started before a federal high court in Lagos, but the defendants are challenging the powers of the court. In this next report, we'll do a recap of what has transpired so far. The EFCC had arraigned former aviation minister Femi Fani Kayode, a former finance minister, Senator Nenadi Usman, and two others on a 17-count charge of laundering about 4.9 billion naira. They had all pleaded not guilty. At the resumed hearing of the case on Monday the 17th of January, the prosecutor, Mr. Rotimi Oyedepo, concluded his examination of the first prosecution witness, one Mr. Idowu Olushegun, a media consultant with Paste Posters Company Limited. In his testimony, which started last year, October, the witness told the court how he received about 24 million naira cash in several tranches for printing of posters and flyers from the office of Mr. Fani Kayode, who served as the director of media and publicity of the PDP presidential campaign organization. There was, however, a twist in the case when the defense lawyers declined to cross-examine the witness. Counsel to Mrs. Nenadi Usman, Mr. Abiodun Wonikoko, a senior advocate of Nigeria, told Justice Muslim Hassan that in the light of pending applications before the court, the stage was ripe for the hearing of an application he filed since last year November seeking a separate trial for his client. He stressed that he was concerned that his client would not get a fair hearing with the present joint trial. He also complained about the choice of Lagos as the venue in a matter which he said had nothing to do with the state. Mr. Wanikoko also told the court that it had become very tedious for Mrs. Nenadi Usman to come from Abuja to Lagos on every adjourned date and spend not less than three days in Lagos, especially with all our accounts frozen. Cancelled to Mr. Fanny Kayode, Mr. Norris and Quaker's SAN, aligned with these submissions and also urged the court to first hear applications touching on its jurisdiction. He informed the court that he had also filed an application challenging the court's jurisdiction. Though his application was only served on the EFCC that day, Channel's television gathered that Mr. Fani Kayode is challenging, amongst other things, the morality of Justice Hassan to continue to preside over the matter after having worked with the EFCC as a senior legal officer and a prosecuting counsel before his appointment as a judge. He is also seeking the transfer of the case to Abuja before another judge. His lawyer maintained that to cross-examine the prosecution witness will mean that he had submitted to the jurisdiction of the court. The EFCC prosecutor objected to these arguments, insisting that after taking their plea, the defendants had already submitted to the jurisdiction of the court. He urged the courts to take all the pending applications together and then give a ruling. On Wednesday, the 18th of January, Justice Muslim Hassan gave his ruling on the request to consider first the applications challenging the court's jurisdiction. The court fixed the 8th of February to hear all the applications. Justice Muslim Hassan, in his ruling, noted all the relevant provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. He particularly cited Section 221 and Section 273 of the Act and held that it is the law that after the plea of an accused person has been taken, an objection can be raised at any time in relation to the charge before judgment. He also held that from a close reading of these statutory provisions, it is clear that the pending applications are not on the competence of the charge, but outside the scope of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, especially as the second defendant, Mrs. Nenadi Usman, is apprehensive that she will not get a fair trial. In view of these provisions, and on the basis of fair hearing and the interest of justice, Justice Hassan ruled that he would take the three pending applications challenging the jurisdiction of the courts. There are some other top stories we're tracking. Here is a recap. We begin at the Court of Appeal sitting in Lagos. Last week, Thursday, the court reserved judgment in two appeals filed by a senior advocate of Nigeria, Ricky Tafa, challenging his trial over alleged bribery. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is prosecuting Mr. Tafa for allegedly obstructing officers of the law from carrying out their duties as well as for falsifying his age. The appellate court, presided over by Justice Mohamed Garuba, reserved judgment in the two appeals 
After hearing arguments from the appellant's counsel, Abiodun Owenikoko, and that of the respondent, Rotimi Oyedeko, Mr. Tafa had appealed against the rulings of Justice Adedayo Akintoye and Justice Aisha Okwesonwo, both of the Lagos High Court, over their refusal to quash the charges filed against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, which is the respondent in the case. He had claimed that the charges were defective and the EFCC had no statutory power to try him on the alleged offences. Justice Mohammed Garba, who adjourned the appeals for judgment, says that the judgment date will be communicated to the parties. At the Code of Conduct Tribunal sitting in Abuja, the President of the Nigerian Senate, Dr. Bukola Saraki, has faulted the allegations of owning and operating foreign accounts while serving as the Governor of Kwara State between 2003 and 2011. At the resumed hearing of the case on alleged false declaration of assets, Dr. Saraki, through his lead counsel, Paul Usoro, told the tribunal that the funds transferred by the Senate President sometime between 2010 and 2012 were primarily for the repayment of a mortgage on a property he acquired in London. The prosecution counsel, Rotimi Jacobs, has however disagreed with the defense lawyer. He says he has more witnesses who will assist the tribunal in establishing the case against Dr. Saraki. Having concluded the examination and cross-examination of the second principal witness, the chairman of the tribunal, Danladi Umar, adjourned the case to the 8th and 9th of February for a further hearing. And in the case against Justice Adeniyi Adimola, the Director of Administration in the National Judicial Council, Mr. Eugene Oduku last week Wednesday tendered a copy of the petition written against the judge by a litigant. The witness who was subpoenaed appeared in court as a witness to tender the petition and the NJC's record of proceedings with respect to the petition. In the petition, one Dr. Sonny Tady, a former director, pension account office of the head of the civil service of the Federation, had alleged that Justice Ademola demanded a 25 million naira bribe from him while standing trial before the judge in 2013. This allegation forms part of the counts in the charges made against the judge. Justice Jude Okeke has adjourned till January the 30th for continuation of trial. In yet another case against another justice of the Supreme Court, a building contractor, one Wamba Chukwebuka, last Wednesday told the Federal High Court that he was paid 313 million naira within nine months by Justice Sylvester Nguta for the building of three sets of houses. Mr. Chukwebuka made this disclosure while testifying as the first prosecution witness in the case of the EFCC against the judge on charges of corruption. He said the houses were built in Ebonyi, the judge's state. We round off at the Lagos High Court sitting in Ikeja, where Justice Latifa Okunu last week Wednesday set aside January 26th to entertain certain applications filed by the convicted chairman and MD of Ontario Oil and Gas Nigeria Limited, Walter Wagwasoma and Adaoha Ugo Nadi. While Mr. Wagwasoma was convicted in absentia, Mrs. Ugo Nadi was present in court, but she collapsed before the sentence could be read. She was said to have been rushed to a waiting vehicle to the hospital, and Justice Okuno has been unable to give her sentence owing to the absence of the convict in court. The convict has, however, filed an application seeking a postponement of the sentencing until she recovers, and also a suspension of the remand order of the court. The judge will rule on the applications on the next adjourned date after the EFCC had time to study and respond to the same. Justice Okuno had convicted Ontario Oil and Gas and its chairman and MD for their involvement in oil subsidy fraud to the tune of 754 million naira. That's the program for this week. We'll take feedback via any of our social media handles. If you missed any parts of this program or past episodes, you can find and watch them again via our YouTube channel. I'm Shola Sheyeli. Thank you for watching.